Hey everybody, Hunter Fisher, Trapper, Trader, Guide, Scout, and Interpreter, and Country Cook, Steve Hall here in Nashville, Tennessee, along with pretty Miss Sheila, my camera girl. Hi, Sheila. Hi. Today, I went to the store actually about two, three days ago, and I bought a turkey breast, and it was frozen. Now, you can thaw it out two different ways. I remember my Uncle Bob said he used to take a whole turkey and put it in one of these big pots, and then he'd run cold water in the side of it real slow and let it overflow in the sink for like... I don't know, five, six, seven, eight hours. And somebody said, well, that's not safe. So I went on my smartphone and I said, how do you thaw a turkey? And it popped up, I think it was foodsafety.org. And it shows two ways. One, you can put it in the refrigerator like so many hours for every four to five pounds or cold water thawing. So they even endorse doing that. But you want to make sure that you run cold water in there, thaw it out. And we've got this completely thawed and we're going to inject it with some goodies here in just a second. Now I'm going to dedicate this recipe here to my father because years ago I think he was the pioneer. If he would have known then what we know now he'd have been a multi-millionaire because he used to go to the veterinary's office and get a needle that they used to inject horses and stuff and the vet would say what are you going to use it for? He'd say I'm going to inject a turkey and it flipped everybody out. They couldn't believe that. In this pot I've got what my dad used to have, a cup of water, one whole stick of butter, which is going in right now because it's starting to bubble over here. Then he would just put in a bunch of salt, pepper, onion powder, and garlic powder, those four. Don't use onion salt and garlic salt, powder. Water, butter, salt, pepper, onion powder, garlic powder, and bring it to a slight little simmer, stir it up, and then we're going to inject that juice into this breast right here. If you go to the grocery store and you see those jars, I don't want to put those companies down, but that stuff is nasty. It is terrible. Whatever that butter creo or whatever, it doesn't taste anything like this right here. So let's move up close and we'll show you what we're going to do. Now here's the neat part. You need to have a Sheila that will stir the butter and a little bit of water, salt, pepper, onion powder, and garlic powder to keep the pepper stirred around in there so it doesn't sink to the bottom or any of your other seasonings. And then you can inject these birds really good. And like I said, I think my dad was the pioneer of this because nobody ever heard of injecting turkeys that came to our house for Thanksgiving because they were so moist and so tender. When you fill this breast meat I like actually dark meat in turkey because I don't like the dry breast meat, except when my dad used to inject it full. And I need a handy dandy helper. I love to watch that puff up and all that stuff go in there. Now you can let this set back in the refrigerator for a few hours if you want, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to move it right to the smoker in just a little bit. I've already did the other side before we turn the camera on. But again, you need somebody to stir that so it keeps all that seasoning and, and tilt, help tilt the little pot over. Awesome. Well, Sheila, you did a great job there. And I think we got just about most of it. The other side is all done. All right, thank you very much. And then, now that we have it all injected, I'm going to just take some good old-fashioned Cajun seasoning and rub it on the outside of this bird. And then we're going to move it out to our smoker. And here's something else. My sister-in-law, when she makes turkey, she cooks it like at 450 to 500 degrees for about I don't know, about a half hour to 45 minutes or so, just to kind of seal the juices in. Of course, a smoker don't go any hotter than about 275 degrees. And then she does it low and slow, 250 degrees for like five or six hours. And here is one other tip. The safe temperature, internal temperature of a bird, and we're going to put a probe in there that is comes along with a smoker out there, but I'm also going to take a separate probe to make sure they match and check it periodically. The safe internal temperature of a turkey is 165 degrees. That's way down deep either into the thigh or into the breast, but not up against the bone. But so many people cook their turkey 
until it's 165 degrees, then they turn the oven off. Then the turkey keeps right on cooking right up past 170, 175, 180, and everybody has dry turkey. So when mine gets even close to 160, it's done. I turn the smoker off, and this bird will still truck on up to about 168 to 170. That's the tip for keeping turkey moist and delicious. So let's move it to the smoker. Well, all right, we got our bird sitting in here. I'm also going to take an onion and just kind of stuff about a half an onion in that top little pocket right there. I just like the flavor of that once it's cooking. Now, this is a master built smoker, and the meat probe button is in the middle and it shows that it's 77 degrees inside the bird. The reason is we had it nice and cold when we were thawing it out but we remember now we injected it with that hot butter and spices and all the kind of goodies and now we're going to turn our smoker up but before we do that I also run a pan in here with lots of water so it keeps it nice and moist which almost kind of steams it and cooks it at the same time and down here the drip pan is covered with aluminum foil and the ash pan and a secondary drip pan way down at the bottom is also covered with aluminum foil. Makes it easy to clean up. And over here is a handy dandy little thing where we're gonna put wood pellets in here, you push it into the smoker, and then you turn it over and it dumps the pellets onto the heat plate without opening the door. That way you don't lose temperature and you can keep adding pellets. Now, one of the biggest mistakes I think that people that smoke stuff make is they smoke it to death. They either use a hardwood like oak or hickory or something and they smoke it and smoke it and smoke it. All these smoke stands on the side of the road that got briskets and stuff and it's jet black. I will never smoke meat like that. I'll cook it till it's got a nice good crust to it and then wrap it in aluminum foil and finish cooking it because I just think it's too much smoke. So with our probe in there we want to heat this up to 160 then shut it off so let's see here. Alright let's go set time. I'm going to give this about four hours to start with because I'm going to come back and check it about every hour or so anyway. So the time is set. Heat just kicked on. Let's set the temp. And I'm going to put this at about 200 and oh 25, 235 degrees. Well, we'll give it 240. About 240 set temp. Now, it alternates between the two of them. When you come out here and look at your smoker, and it's on right now, it's heating up, but I don't have the door shut. It says four minutes. We've got a nice storm going today. It's a perfect day to smoke something. 76 degrees, 77 degrees. Now that's the internal temperature of the oven and the only way you can check the probe is by pushing the meat probe button. So let's get her closed so we can start building some heat in here. I had this nice and level but I wanted to turn it sideways so that the camera could look in there nice so it's a little bit off a of, off of kilter there. But All right, here's an update. It's already up to 90 degrees and heating up. I actually set the temp clear up to 275 degrees because I do want to build kind of a, not really a crust, but I want to get a lot of moisture going on the outside of the bird. And I'm not going to put the smoke to it until it's about an hour or two hours into the process until the breast is really sweaty and got a lot of moisture because I want the smoke to stick to that. So I'm not going to smoke it now. I'm going to put the smoke to it about two hours in. And I check this meat probe on the inside and it's down to 64 degrees. So even though we put that hot injected butter and all that stuff in there because the entire breast was so cold it pulled it back down from 80 something down to 64. But that'll heat up too as we move along. Man I just can't stand myself. It's time to do some smoking. Right here it's only three hours left so it's only been one hour and it's already up to about 267 or 270 degrees ballpark there. Yeah 267 and the internal probe temperature I'm shocked is up to 108 already. Obviously because it's just a breast and not an entire turkey is what I'm used to cooking all the time. So we're going to keep a close eye on that. We may have to turn it off a little sooner because again we want to stop it at 160 degrees. Now we're going to put these pellets in and these are apple wood and cherry 
and I keep them in quart jars that I throw in my vacuum packer and seal the whole jar. It pulls the air out and it just pops the lids right down. You don't even need the cap that goes on top or anything. That's in another video if you want to check it out on our channel. And here's them little pellets right here. That's all you need to put the smoke to it. See how nice and clear it is inside? That's going to change here in just a minute. Because I don't have to open the door and ruin the temperature, all I have to do is take this little plunger, put it in there, and turn it upside down, and now the pellets have just been dumped onto the little ashtray flat that's right above the element. So it's only going to take just a little bit, and that's, <laughs> that's going to really fill with smoke. So let's see how long it takes. We'll be back in just a minute to see how long it takes to add smoke to that entire chamber. I put those pellets in there when it said two hours and 58 minutes left. At 2.56, two minutes later, it didn't look like it was doing anything. And now it's at 2.54, only another two minutes, and smoke is pouring out everywhere. It's even coming out from the seam around that tube, really puffing good. And the inside of the glass is just full of smoke now. And the little vent over here is just pouring it out, even though I got it shut down to almost nothing. There's a couple of tips I want to talk to you about. First of all, you can use chips, wood chips, instead of pellets. You don't have to use pellets. And you don't have to soak your wood in water. Now, everybody used to do that for a long time, and some people still do. They soak their wood chips in water. I don't know who told them that, because when you put it in there, all it does is produce steam, because water doesn't make smoke. So it has to evaporate it, and then it finally gets to the wood, and it doesn't make it smoke any longer, because it has to dry it out first, and then it burns. So if you put dry chips in, turn it in there and smoke it, it'll burn it up, it'll give you the equal amount than if you soak it in water and then you steam your meat along with the smoking, but you don't get any more smoke by soaking it in wood chips. Now I know some people argue with me about that, but I don't care, you don't have to soak them. Here's something else that that company I've been talking about, that amazing product sells. These little racks right here, you'll notice that these troughs are straight and these troughs are slanted. And this is a whole nother show I'm going to talk to you about and it's for cold smoking. In here they sell a powder or a, a sawdust. It's real fine ground up and you put that in there and you light the end with a torch and it's almost like a cigar or a cigarette. It just sits there and burns along and this tray, believe it or not, will burn for like 12 to 14 hours in a smoker. Not that you'd ever smoke anything that long, but if you want a cold smoke you can use these and this here is the pellets and the reason it's got that slanted trough is so that as the pellets burn they fall down into the bottom and I'll do that in another show and it's great for cold smoking because the only problem with these smokers when it comes to cold smoking like cheese or something like that is you gotta turn the heater up to get the burner going or you gotta try to burn a bunch of wood in a pan and throw it in there and slam the door you don't have to do that with these little units right here because they don't produce any heat, they just produce smoke. So you can put cheese in there, you don't need trays of ice water like a lot of people do, you don't need any of that stuff. Well, I gotta tell you something else too. This is really going on this heat probe. Internal temperature is 121 degrees in the probe inside the bird. And But remember, we're doing just a breast and not a whole turkey. And I think that makes a difference. Even though the breast is kind of you know, wrapped around by the thighs and stuff, it really shouldn't heat up differently, but apparently it is because it's getting in from the bottom or something. And look at that. Man, the smoke has just filled that entire chamber. And by the time that little tray of pellets burns up and the smoke dissipates, that'll be plenty. We don't have to smoke it and smoke it and smoke it and smoke it because it just tastes nasty. And again, I use apple wood and cherry wood. Look at here. You don't think there's enough smoke in there? Look at that thing. Whoa! Just wanted to show you that. That just produces plenty. And uh, I put it on 275 degrees, and now it's finally 278. The burner shuts off and it kind of goes on by. Uh, but it took about an hour to get to 275. But as it was going up, it was pulling that probe right alongside of it. It's 123 degrees on the probe. So we're going to keep a close eye on that. And I may just leave it at 275 because it's just the breast. It is injected with all the juices and goodies. And that's one other tip I was going to tell you that I almost forgot about. 
Remember I put in a cup of water, a whole stick of butter, salt, pepper, onion powder, and garlic powder. But my dad used to put in about a teaspoon of lemon juice. And I forgot to put it in the recipe. So don't forget when you make your little brine that you're going to inject into the turkey or turkey breast or chicken legs or anything else, put in a little shot of lemon juice. I'll run her all the way down to 100 and there's 70. There's 100 and there's 55 degrees. So that turns off that burner. See, 163, getting there real close, 164, that's close enough for me because it's going to heat up the rest of the way. And I just wanted to double check this probe with that probe right there. Then I'm going to get these handy dandy little hot hands that I bought on TV. They are a little clumsy to use, even though they show them on television pulling ears of corn right out of boiling water, which you can do. I love it for handling like turkeys out of your oven pan and stuff. They make another set that actually goes up mid-thigh, but you don't really need that. But this is the neat part, because you can just pull that out. I can pick this bird right up. It doesn't burn my hands. I can set it on a tray, carry it in the house, and I'm going to move that indoors. We're going to let it rest, check it with the probe again to make sure it does the 165 thing, and it's done. Don't cook it to 170 or 175 degrees because you're going to have dry meat. So let's take it inside and see how beautiful this turkey is. And there she is. Hard to get these little hot mitts off, but I love these hot hands. Mmm. Man, that juice on there tastes absolutely fantastic. Goodness gracious. Well, here's what we did. We took this and bought it two, like two, three days ago, solid frozen, at the store. Put it in the refrigerator for two days. Then I just put it in a pot and run cold water. Just a little stream in one side of the pot so it would overflow the top and did that for about another hour. And that really pulls the frost out of the middle of that. Then over here in this little pot, we took a cup of water, we took one stick of butter, salt and pepper to taste. Of course, I salt and pepper, and I do a little extra pepper, and got Sheila to stir it so the pepper would pull up in our little needle injector here. Don't buy that stuff in the store, it's nasty. We also put in some garlic powder and onion powder, use the powders, not the salt, and I forgot the lemon juice. Put in about a teaspoon of lemon juice in there and stir that in too. But I think it's going to be fine the way it is. Let's do a little carving. Come on over here. Now you can't see this little gauge here, but it's 166 degrees. Now, one thing I want to kind of update you on is when you're cooking low and slow, like only 250 or 275, it won't chase by the temperature about only about three or four degrees after you take it out of the, the smoker. So when you're doing it in the oven at 350 degrees, then you better stop it at 160. But I stopped it at about 163, 164, and it already went to 166 in the middle. So we are good to go here. Time for my little electric flaying knife. This is gonna be so good. Man, oh man. And when you inject these birds, even the dry meat, or even the white meat, look at this, right here, on the inside of that bird. Can you see that, Sheila? Yeah. Look at that. It is just so delicious. Let's see if we can't plate this up over here. So get yourself a turkey breast, or get a small entire turkey if it'll fit in your smoker. And... Let it set. We let this set for about 15 minutes or so. And the temperature kept right on coming up there. And look at the inside. It's completely done all the way through. There is no pink meat in there anywhere. So even though we stopped it at 163 or 164, it cooked right on to 166 and probably would keep right on going up another 5 degrees or so if we didn't take it out and cut it open. So don't cook your turkeys to death. And here is, just to get started, some nice sliced turkey, which we're going to make some turkey sandwiches. And we are just thrilled to show you that recipe. I like that knife. Oh, you like that electric flame knife? That works out good, doesn't it? Good. One little piece fell over here on the side. That goes to the chef. Oh, my Lord. It is so juicy and so delicious. 
Well, here's actually a little something I did after the video you're actually watching. I took the turkey and I threw the breast plate and all the stuff in there after I trim the meat off with a fillet knife and man nice chunks of turkey are falling off of it right off the bone and I'm gonna put in some celery a little bit of carrots some peppers seasoning and make me just some good broth turkey soup just for something to sip on so I don't waste any of that good smoked turkey so let's get back to the video that you're already watching Man, I don't know what to tell you. This white meat is just so juicy. Plus, after this cools, we're going to eat a lot of it while it's still warm. But after it cools, we're going to put it in our little vac machine. Vac pack it and throw it in the refrigerator. It'll just last for weeks as long as you vacuum pack it. And I hope you enjoy our recipes. Here we are with our recipe that is, what's it called? What should we call it? Uh, turkey breast in the smoker. Does that sound good? Is it the best and most delicious turkey breast in the smoker you ever ate? If it ain't, it ought to be. This is Steve Hall in Nashville along with Pretty Miss Sheila saying I hope you subscribe to our channel. It'll pop up in the corner here about the last 20 seconds. And we're going to try to get some more recipes out to you real soon. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.